So welcome to our coffee and PRD catch up. Thank you for joining us during our PRD support week during lockdown. My name is Sharon Smith. I'm a senior education officer at the General Teaching Council Scotland. And I'm going to hand you over to the other participants today to introduce themselves, starting with my colleague. Good morning, everyone. My name is David Graham. I'm one of the senior managers within the education team at GTC Scotland. Hi, I'm Leslie Henderson. I'm the Professional Learning and Leadership Development Officer um, in Fife. Uh, primarily, my role is supporting our school leaders and our aspiring school leaders. Hello, I'm Michael Smith. I'm head teacher at Healing Primary School in Angus, currently working at the Sid Law Hub. Leslie and Michael, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm looking forward to, to today's discussion and hearing your thoughts on PRD and professional learning during these unusual times, which they most certainly are. Before I begin, though, um, Michael, I'd like to congratulate you on recently receiving your standard for headship. And um, that's that's great news. So many congratulations there. Thank you very much. I'm sure you'll be looking forward to celebrating online with your peers on the 3rd of June. Indeed. Yes, thank you. Ho hopefully we'll catch up with, with you there. So without any further ado, um, I'd like to begin. So earlier this week, I shared a blog entitled Should I Be Worrying About PRD? And I discussed there whether teachers across, across Scotland should be considering um, PRD just now at this moment. And I wondered if you could both share your thoughts with, with regards to that. Sharon, in Fife, we um, certainly are encouraging um, our school leaders mm -hmm. to arrange professional review and development meetings, eh, primarily because they have a bit of space and time at the moment. Um, but also, it has become abundantly clear over the last however many weeks, eight weeks, that our staff have been engaging in vast amounts of professional learning, um, whether that's around use of digital technologies or um, learning how to work differently and working remotely with children and young people. Um, I'm sure they're learning lots of things about their, their children um, that they have in their classrooms. And so for, for us in Fife, it's really about us recognising and celebrating um, all of the professional learning that has gone on post lockdown, because we can't forget that between August and March, our um, colleagues were heavily involved in their professional learning, but also we can't not recognise what they've been doing uh, during lockdown. And, and I think I hear people saying, oh, I haven't got time for professional learning. And then you speak to them and ask them, so how did you learn about that? What did you do there? And before you know it, they're talking about amazing amounts of professional learning that they've been engaged in. Um, as a local authority, we've been supporting um, the ongo ongoing professional learning, PRD and professional update during lockdown. We've, there's been a sway issued to all of our schools. Um, it links them to resources to support professional learning. Um, and we've just recently been starting to add examples of good practice in professional learning. Um, I work closely with some of the aspiring middle leadership groups. And, uh, and when I've had tutor group meetings with them in the last couple of weeks, they've been saying... Um, you know, this has been a great opportunity. I've really seen people come together. The collaboration, um, even though it's done virtually, uh, people really coming together and wanting to improve the school um, and really being supportive of um, strategic change initiatives, etc. So I think um, it has to be celebrated and we can do that through PRD. Absolutely. Michael. Yeah, I have to agree with a lot of what Sharon was saying there. I mean, certainly in Angus, the picture is the same. We're still supporting PRD and that professional learning. Um, I think certainly celebrating what's been going on and the individuals who are learning to deliver learning and teaching in such different ways to what we're all used to, absolutely is important. And I think as well, the collaboration that we're seeing going on with staff, not just teachers, but other staff too, working together, organising their own teams, meetings, or however it is they're getting together to share their experiences and how they're doing what they're doing now, but also looking at what that will look like in the future. And I think that's a key element of what these PRD discussions are about just now, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's, is the future going to look like? What are we learning about ourselves and about the way we work now? And how are we going to use that in the future? Certainly the ABS and, and Angus, they are supporting the professional learning through sharing resources. 
and similar to you were describing there as well, Sharon, um, putting on tiles through Glow so that we can access these and, and make use of various forms of professional learning across a huge area of, of different topics and themes. And I suppose that comes from some of my, my own experience as well as thinking about that personalization of all of this. All of us are experiencing similar things, but in some ways very different um, experiences as well. Some of us are working in hubs more than others. Some of us are finding it more challenging. And I think part of the sort of not being worried element of this is that understanding that we are all experiencing different things and that well-being is so important at this time for our learners, for our families, but also for ourselves and for our staff. So yes, absolutely, there is that time and there's that space for professional learning, but that should be, I think, encouraged to be almost self-directed, having that leadership of their own learning so that when we come back to whatever normal looks like in the future, people are able to take on board what it is that they've gained from this and move forward in a very positive way. Absolutely. So I think the, the experience that um, that we've picked up from registrants who've contacted us really mirrors um, what, what both of you have, have said. But I think for me, the, the really important thing to note at the moment is the quality and the tone of these PRD conversations. Absolutely, PRD provides that opportunity to celebrate those successes. And yes, we, we, we know that there's been a huge amount of professional learning um, going on. But I think just to kind of pick up on something Michael said there, it's also a really good opportunity to acknowledge and reflect on those challenges that people have experienced during lockdown. And those challenges won't all be the same. Um, but I think that PRD provides a real opportunity to reflect on those challenges, acknowledge and reflect and I identify, as Michael said, those lessons learned from this experience. So I think there's a need more than ever for a reviewer who can demonstrate empathy and support solution focused discussions around the developing challenges that all staff will be facing. So I'd, I'd be interested to know what, what's your experience of those conversations that have taken place during lockdown? So I, I met with a group of head teachers this morning um, as part of our head teacher induction programme. Um, and one of the questions that I was keen to ask them about was their experience of PRD with their staff teams um, during the lockdown period. And they were all really highlighting how much they have valued the one-to-one -one time uh, with their teaching staff, their non-teaching staff. Um, do, you know, and having that time and space just one to one um, to talk with their staff, they, they, they have really felt that um, everybody has really come on board, that people have really, really thought about um, what professional learning they've engaged in. They've had opportunities to talk about the challenges um, that they faced and, and in some respects get support for that because that's sometimes what our PRD conversations are about. It's about identifying um, support to help um, our colleagues um, if we can signpost them in the right direction, etc. But it's also good as a reviewer to have that awareness um, of how your staff are feeling. Um, they did say, one of them did say that um, they should spend a, a wee bit of time at the beginning trying to sort out the technology which you wouldn't have you wouldn't have to do if you were meeting in a school in the school building etc. You wouldn't have to sort out Teams or uh, whatever platform you were using. But she said it's be they did all say it had been really enjoyable for them, especially as fairly new head teachers, um, having that opportunity to really have a discussion with their staff. Um, and and what they did recognise that it was important that these conversations had to be done within the culture and climate of trust. Yeah. Um, and that nobody was being judged um, if they were finding things more tricky than than others, um, but also having that opportunity to reassure their staff um, that they are not the only ones that might be finding some areas a challenge at the moment. Um, but they definitely spoke really highly of having the chance uh, to be able to do this. But obviously, they also recognised you couldn't see body language, etc., uh, virtually. Uh, which is a really important part of having a professional conversation. Well, certainly, I absolutely agree that it is about that sort of understanding the experiences of others. Um, having discussions with my own staff, 
who've been talking about what they've experienced and what challenges they've been facing. And we've really enjoyed coming together as a whole team to look at what collectively we're learning from all of this and what that means for us as a school and as a staff team. But also individually having a chance to sort of catch up with members of staff on a one-to-one -one basis. I find myself really listening to what it is that they're telling me that they're struggling with. And it's different for everybody. Um, some of them I see one-to-one uh, -one in the hub where we work. Some of them aren't able to come into the hub. So again, the challenges there are different too because everyone's experiences are different. Uh, are different sorry. So when we're coming together collaboratively, those are showing too. So I think part of that discussion, that PRD process is really understanding what this is meaning for every individual and how we as reviewers can support that. And part of that is really focusing on the now and what future is. So yes, of course, there'll be priorities that have been set in, in the past, but I think that the, the impetus well, what's happening right now, what does that mean for everyone? And part of that is, of course, celebrating whatever learning has gone on between those people and also acknowledging the fact that there are future opportunities for that professional learning. And from my own experience as well, having had my PRD just last week with my line manager, it was very much about me, the reviewee, and the coaching style of conversation that we had allowed me to really reflect on what I'm experiencing currently and see the strengths in that, of course. Uh, I'm learning new skills, I'm working with different people, I'm almost getting the hang of teams and, and all this new technology, but also understanding that what improve my priorities I might have recognized for the school up until this lockdown are different and they're different for very valid and important reasons and that's from what I'm hearing from the discussions I'm having with my staff it's what they're hearing from parents and from children and I think in terms of what PRD really means that real uh, learning and a professional understanding of who we are is so important and it will hugely inform what we do going forward. Uh, that, thank you both for, for those very honest and sincere comments there. It's, um, yesterday I wrote a piece on reviewing with heart and I think for me, um, I, I wrote that piece because I felt as a reviewer, um, it's really important that normally under normal circumstances we come to, to our, our, our meetings forearmed and prepared and know exactly where our reviewees thoughts are and, and in a position to talk about maybe um, career conversations and next steps for that um, reviewee but I felt that it was really important that we also acknowledge that being a teacher isn't just about the knowing and the doing but it's also about the being and it's really really important that we focus on helping our teachers identify and stay strong to that in these meetings just now. We, we need to come perhaps as a reviewer with more of a pastoral hat on um, and really lead with that empathy and, 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 and honesty um, and to be maybe prepared and forearmed to be able to signpost if we need to help our, our, our teachers with, you know, with health and wellbeing resources and just being able to be that, that point of reassurance. Um, it, I, I do sense that some teachers may just become a little bit more emotional because they have that opportunity to have a one-to-one, -one, um, which isn't always feasible when we're working remotely as we are. So just, yeah, I think it's just remember to, to, to to undertake your review without the belt and braces approach and just do it with heart as 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 teachers we do so well so last week i am um, the first minister released her roadmap um, to help us through and out of this crisis and we still have quite a few unanswered questions about what that might look like for for us in schools um, so i just wondered what you what you think what you both think about um where the professional standards can help and support as we try to identify what our next steps will be for us in our professional learning for the year ahead so sharon for me that the, the biggest thing that i think that has come to the fore um during the current situation and will continue to inform the way in which we work is the focus on our values. Um, they run right through the standards from early phase to the standard for headship. And I think they have just become really, really key factors in who we are as teachers. Um, and I always say to people, what is it that makes you get out of your bed in the morning? Um, and, and at the moment, yes, they might be getting out of their bed to get online um, and not go to a school building. But um, those core values of 
the reasons why we are teachers um, have really come to the fore. And I think that's how our professional standards will support us through this. Um, and I know that we know that, you know, our professional standards are known by us as teachers, but not necessarily by the wider public. Um, I do hope that as a result of um, what's been happening and how our teachers have risen to the challenge, um, you know, and embraced um, all of the learning that they've had to, to embrace, um, that people, out, out the wider public will see um, how the values of our teaching profession, and profession have shone through um, during this current situation. I don't know about any of you in there, but um, I am amazed and thoroughly um, impressed with um, the amount of work that our teachers have done um, across the board. Michael, I'm sure your staff have all gone above and beyond, um, and I certainly know that's true of the teachers in Fife. Um, and not only our teachers, um, but also our non-teaching non staff, our PSAs, our um, early years teams, um, our admin staff, etc., who have either been supporting in uh, the activity centres or who have been uh, supporting children with learning online and their families. Very much so. I couldn't agree more, Leslie. Um, certainly from the experience I've had, that values and professional commitment has absolutely shone through. I can't thank my whole school staff enough for what they've done and how they've come together through this time leading on so many aspects of learning that weren't necessarily what we were looking at, but they've come to the fore as a result of what's going on currently. Um, I've got certain members of staff who are leading a, an early years curriculum, working teachers with early years staff. It's, it's fantastic. So I think you're absolutely right with that, Leslie, that all of that um, commitment and those genuine values that we uphold as, as a teaching profession absolutely are shining through. And I do hope that the public see them as much as we uh, I've seen them in schools and in hubs currently. Um, in terms of other professional standards that I think are, are really at play currently are, of course, the, the CLPL standards. Um, we talked earlier about how this is allowing some professional space for learning and for engaging with aspects uh, looking at, at the future and what this might hold. So I think when we look at those standards as a guide to um, impact on self, impact on others, that collaborative learning, and really looking at how this is informing and sh allowing us to see our teachers and again, non-teaching staff take on that leadership of learning and for learning um, at this time, which is, is so crucial. Again, from my own experience, seeing um, members of staff who are really looking at that sustainability for learning, looking at in times such as these, hopefully we'll never see them again, of course, but learning from this sort of way of, of life and, and putting something in place so that we have all gained um, us as adults, but of course our children and their families too. Absolutely, thank you very much. And I suppose, as, as you mentioned, Michael, the uh, CLPL standards, the, the collaboration element and the leadership of and for and being able to actually be those agents of change by leading the learning to actually make differences for uh, and improvements going forward and not returning to that normal. I mean, there's a lot of conversation just now about normal not, not being maybe as, as it, the best it could be. So what now is a time of, an absolute time of change and, and can, can we lead with that going forward? So um, actually it's an opportunity to make a difference here, isn't there, hugely. So David, I'd like to ask you now about professional update. Um, I know there will be some of our listeners um, who maybe do sign off this year and, and are perhaps a little bit concerned that this COVID curveball that's come in and knocked us out of kilter has, um, will it impact in some way on the professional update? What message do you have for those people? Absolutely, Sharon. We, we, we had a number of people who've contacted us with, with that concern. So I think that the first thing I would want to say to anyone who's listening, if it's your PU sign-off year this session, please don't worry about it. I don't want anyone to feel that there, that there is a pressure to complete that at this time. We, we normally ask people to um, complete their sign off by the, by the end of June, 1st of July each year. And what we've done at the moment is we have extended that deadline until the end of October. But even that extended deadline will be under review. Um, as Sharon, as you said earlier, the First Minister has 
they've released the first details of the, the route map out of lockdown. But there are, there are still so many things for us to know exactly what that's going to look like and, and how schools will be operating. So if we need to review that deadline again come the end of October, then we absolutely will. Um, it's really an acknowledgement of, of what um, both Leslie and Michael have, have said. At, at GTC Scotland, I think we are incredibly proud of how our workforce have, have risen to this this challenge. In, incredibly proud and, and really want to acknowledge that. So that's really one of the main reasons why PU, um, we don't want that to be an added pressure to anyone at this time. That said, we've spoken at, at length about the benefits of the, the PRD conversation um, and, and, and continuing that during, during lockdown. So I would still encourage people to en engage in that, but not worry so much about the technical sign off. We also want to acknowledge that our professional learning plans, probably all of us, they've, they've changed quite significantly. So I know people worry about that, especially if they're due to sign off, that their plan might have been agreed a year ago. And actually it now looks very different because our priorities had to change. That's absolutely fine and absolutely understandable. And all of that will be taken into account at the at the time of sign off. I think the other thing that I, I want, want to say is to acknowledge that we're all facing challenges and all of those challenges are different. Some colleagues have taken the opportunity to engage in uh, professional learning at the moment, perhaps some additional activities that hadn't been part of their plan. And I think that's I think that's great and absolutely to be encouraged. But it's also OK if you, you're not in the right place to have been able to do that recently. Um, so I don't want people to feel the need to compare or compete with others or feel guilty at all if their circumstances have prevented them engaging um, in professional learning in, in the way that they would have liked to. So I think what what would be good to hear from from you is if what what messages would you give to your staff um, moving forward and in, in, in this the coming weeks and months and what what would you say to them about priorities and changing priorities for professional learning? I think from certainly from my viewpoint, it's about um, taking into consideration that. You know, I, I like the phrase, I've heard it said many times around that we're all facing the same storm, but we're not all in the same boat. Um, and I think that's absolutely true um, of our teaching professionals. Um, some will be balancing childcare, uh, caring for family members with looking out for their own classes. Um, and and it, it links back to our values again. There is no teacher out there who is not doing all they can to juggle um, all of the different things that they're facing. Some may, in fact, even be ill, and we have to we have to take that into consideration. Um, and so, our advice would be um, to do what you can when you can. Um, if it's not the right time for you, then have that conversation with your manager. But we would also be encouraging our reviewers um, to be speaking um, to their staff and 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 getting that message from, from them if if it's not quite the right time. Um, Sharon, you mentioned earlier about people perhaps come, becoming more emotional uh, during a PRD conversation. Nobody is telling anybody they have to carry that conversation on uh, because at that point in time, it might just be about compassion um, and having that one-to-one -one conversation with, with somebody. You can revisit your PRD meeting at any time. Um, and we absolutely do recognise um, as a local authority that for some of our staff, that professional learning won't have been the priority uh, because of all the other competing demands they've had. And, and ultimately, um, what we most want is, is that our children are safe and healthy and engaging in learning where they can. So if we were to add an extra pressure on about professional learning, PRD, um, in, in terms of they must be completed then, um, I think we're taking away the emphasis on getting the getting it right for all of our children and young people. 
Absolutely, Leslie. I think you said it perfectly there. Um, we've already discussed how this is individual for, for everybody. Our experiences aren't the same. Um, and we have to be cognizant of that when, when we're conducting any sort of PRD or PU discussions. And about talking about it being individual, I think, is also the key, just as you touched upon yourself, Leslie, there. If people feel in position to engage with a professional update, absolutely, it should be encouraged. If, if the time and the space has allowed them to engage in professional learning, then absolutely, and that's, that's fantastic. But we do need to be mindful for those who are not. And I think, as you said there, David, as well, it's it's removing that feeling of guilt, which I think as a profession we are very, very bad for. We, we often feel guilty, um, which is so unfortunate when we do so much good in what we do. But I think uh, being nurturing, being understanding and truly listening to your people, the people you work with, the people that you see all the time, and just understanding what have you experienced from this and, and what does that mean for you? Again, I think I've said that before, but it's so important. Any reviewer right now, I think, should be thinking, how best can I listen and how best can I support? What does this person need from me and how can we best find that? So all of us moving forward can do the very best. And again, what you said there, Leslie, it's, it's about looking after our young people and their families. Of course it is. But if our health and well-being isn't in the right position, we can't do that well. So all of us need to be working together as we do so well um, in Scotland. We do. And I think it's just being there for each other. And drawing upon the wider networks, I think, as well, that some of us have managed to engage in to really improve um, on this situation and to use it to our advantage. Thank you both for that. Um, I think as well, it's really important that we we put our own oxygen masks on first as teachers, isn't it? And I think actually that the, the reminder there in a PRD discussion might be, you know, actually you need to look after yourself first. And yes, then we'll get it right for every child thereafter. But actually you can't do your job if you're not um, functioning as, as best you can. So look after yourself. And, and this is probably a, a great time to plug our health and wellbeing resources that we have on our hub on our website that please uh, um, share th those with all your colleagues in, in your schools and local authorities because there, there will be something there that somebody will find of use to them to help them navigate through these times of uncertainty. Tomorrow I'm writing a piece um, on culture and climate of trust going forward and just as both of you have, have said there, I think what's really important is that we are listening, we are compassionate, and it, 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 and I've kind of given a nod to resources that we previously created at the launch of our unlocking the potential document. Um, but actually, now is a time where we are all vulnerable, leaders and all members of staff in schools, and actually how can we capitalise on that together to actually create a really strong climate and culture of trust as we go forward. So that will, that will be on our website tomorrow. So finally, before we um, before we finish up very quickly, do you have any top tips or poignant messages you'd like to share with everyone about PID? I think for me, it's to uh, reflect on what you did post lockdown. Um, please don't forget all of the good work um, that you did prior to schools um, being closed. Recognise the learning that you will have done um, during the last um, period, the last eight week period when we've been in lockdown, um, but also um, be very mindful that your own health and wellbeing, as has been said by everybody, um, is one of the most important factors um, in all of this. Um, and, and certainly in Fife, that's one of the questions in our PRD agendas, is how are you managing uh, your own work-life balance um, and, and some questions to guide them around um, what, what their own well-being uh, looks like and how that links to their professional learning. Again, yes, I absolutely agree. Um, obviously, reflect on what's gone before and, and what we can learn from it and how can we use that to, to move forward and, and make improvements in our school and again to, to work and learn more sustainably. But also I think as a as an individual, you know, know yourself, you know, be do what's right for you. Do what feels right and what you're able to do at this time. Don't compare yourself to other people, what they're doing or what you're seeing or hearing elsewhere. Um, focus on yourself and very crucially as we said already before, your well being. Um, and as a reviewer, listen to the people you work with 
and do what you can to put what's needed in place so all of us can, can be better for it. Thank you both very much. Top tips, mar marvellous top tips, can I say, they're super. And I'm sure anyone listening to us today will really have taken a lot away from the, the wise words that you've shared with us. Thank you both so much for joining both myself and David and our listeners today. Um, and I wish you all the best of luck navigating those choppy waters as we head forward into the unknown. So um, all the very best and thanks once again. Take care.